look what I've got. <laughs> I bought myself a new present. Look, I've got a brand spanking new beautiful microphone, but it's still in the box. So I actually haven't had time since yesterday to even open the box. But how cool is this? Have you seen those Yeti microphones? Uh, they're not the cheapest microphone, but um, it's just better than going through the computer speakers. So I just thought I'd share that with you guys because I can't wait to open it and uh, get it up and running and you can see the difference of what I sound like. It's good for interviews and stuff like that as well. I just got to find the time to <laughs> open the box. Anyway, how are you all going? Today we're going to talk about bad habits. This was something that I was going to talk to you guys about yesterday, but I got sidetracked by something else. If you don't know what I mean, go back and watch yesterday's video. Uh, but I think I still wanted to talk to you about this um, this week because I'm only going live today and tomorrow, and then I'm going to have a break for a week or so, a week and a half from my scheduled lives. I'll still come live, but um, I'm sure you're going to see me being looking a lot more relaxed and rested. <laughs> and I'll come live when uh, when I feel like it. Uh, so I'll still be live, just not scheduled live, but just going to take a bit of a break, as you all should as well if you do regular live videos. Um, so who has bad habits of some sort? Do you have things that don't serve you well? I bet you do. Um, is it procrastination? Is it something to do with, um, you know, your, your business and not taking enough action? Is it chocolate? Is it uh, wine? What's your bad habit that you have? Is it not exercising? You know, you should, but you don't. Everyone's got a bad habit of some sort or many of them. And they often don't serve as well. I want to know what they are. Tell me what your bad habits are. Now, what we want to try and do is not bring that into the new year. Let's break some of these things that don't serve you very well and start sort of a clean slate next year. Now, two things with that when I say that. Guys, you don't need a new year to break a bad habit. Everyone puts this emphasis on New Year's resolutions and new me, new year, new you, you, blah, 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 blah. Um, everyone puts all this emphasis on the new year where, you know, really you can make a decision today to change tomorrow. So I think too much emphasis is put on, you know, new start, new year, but it is a good opportunity to sort of wipe the slate clean and go, no, I've had enough. I just want to do things differently. So it's an opportunity to sort of give yourself a bit of a kickstart, but really we shouldn't be looking towards a new year to kick a bad habit, should we? We should kick a bad habit on any day. It's the same as I was talking to my network marketing team about this, or oh, when was it? Last week, maybe? You know, about Christmas and business. And uh, it was a really good point that one of our uh, team members brought up in that, you know, a lot of people um, say use Christmas as an excuse. I'm too busy, too much going on, things like that. Whereas at the end of the day, it's only one day. Um, so people put their lives on hold for different things, for different occasions, and we really shouldn't. So the same with bad habits. You shouldn't hang on to them until the new year. You should want to get rid of them straight away. But what I want to share with you today is if you've got some things that don't serve you well, how do we actually break it? That's the hard part. There's things that you do that you know you maybe shouldn't do or don't serve you well, all those kind of things, but you just don't know how to break it and you subconsciously go back to old ways because that's the way the brain works. So that's what I want to share with you today and hope that it just helps in some capacity. So if we haven't met before, my name's Helen Martin and I'm your online crew captain. So all that means is I'm here to serve our amazing online crew community here which is entrepreneurs, home-based business owners, direct sellers, those in network marketing, digital marketing, online marketing, you know, all of the above. And we're learning to leverage social media to build our business online. Um, so uh, that's basically what we do here first and, you know, foremost. But I do talk once a week about something to do with personal development, personal growth, because you can learn all the skills under the sun. You can learn how to put a Facebook funnel together, you know, lead magnets and all those kind of things. But if you've got a hell of a lot of bad habits, for example, that doesn't mean a crack because you'll let yourself down. So things like self-belief and self-worth and, um, you know, just believing that you can do it, believing that you can actually be wealthy, you know, all those kind of things, that's what's going to make you successful. You make you successful, not online strategies. So it's really important that in the mix of talking about social media that we talk about you, 
Okay, does that make sense? Um, so this is my second to last live, official live of the year. So make sure you join me tomorrow. Um, but we really want you to have an awesome cracking year next year, don't we? Social media is where it's at. Online is where it's at. COVID has sped that up by years, especially our industry. People that weren't looking for home-based businesses are now looking. They're now considering. They're now looking at, um, you know, how can I work from home? How can I create an additional income stream? So you're in exactly the right place uh, and well done for that. We're just going to make sure you've got all the tools and the resources under your belt to be successful, okay, because you're the one that's going to make that happen, not me, not anybody else, not a funnel, you. Okay, so before I get into the content for uh, today, or oh, just um, just a reminder, up in the link above, if you are not currently a member of our online crew coaching community, it might be something that you want to consider. Just click the link above and check out all the details in the little video that I've got there, because this is the last month that I'm offering um, over seven thousand dollars worth of social media training for free when you join our coaching community, which is next to nothing cost wise. Um, but you get over seven grand's worth of practical social media training. Olive and I spent two hours this morning with the web developer. And we still could have gone on for another hour, I'm sure, tidying everything up for the new members login area where all the boot camps are going to be beautifully placed there for you and organised and all the rest of it. So this close to all that being ready as well. Okay, so don't miss that opportunity. So let's see who's here. We've got Christine, we've got Cherie, we've got Julie. Christine, yay, congrats, thank you. Hello, Patricia, how are you? Rafael, you got the same one? Yeah, a lot of people, that's their, their go-to as far as a microphone goes. I'd, I'd love one of those, um, you know, having a big arm connected to it all on the rest, but I really don't need to go that fancy. Hello, Beth, how are you? You know, and those of you that think you need, you know, a setting like this and lighting and microphones, what you really don't. It's you, it's your message, it's your personality, it's your raw, authentic, you know, the human being in you that'll attract people to you. It's not lights, it's not a background, it's not a microphone. So don't think that you need all of those things. I've been doing lives for, I don't know, a few years before I've even thought of something like that. Well, I may have thought about it, but I haven't done anything about it. So don't worry about all of that kind of stuff, that'll come. Uh, hello, Heather, good to see you on. Awesomeness. First time ever seeing a Yeti. Well, there you go. I just have to get it out of the box. <laughs> I'll love it. Thank you. Hello, Eric. Good to see you from Denmark. We've got Melvet as well. Hello, Olive. How are you? We've got Beth. You so deserve a break. Thank you, Beth. Hello, Yvette. Good to see you on. So glad to hear you're taking a break. Yes, need it. Everybody needs to recharge, don't they? Everybody. Hey, Laurie. Good to see you on. Yes, I've had several and I'm working on them. The bad habits, Heather would be referring to chocolate and not, not enough exercise. Thanks for your honesty, guys. I think you just listed all of mine. <laughs> okay. Procrastinating, a lot of people do that. Uh, not consistent exercise. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people can relate there. Just start uh, whenever to make the best you you can be. Exactly. Still have bad habits. Sugar and negative silk top are my top two. But in saying that, Laurie has kicked Mountain Dew, kicked cigarettes, like an amazing year. You've actually kicked two really, really bad habits this year. So um, well done to you, Laurie. That's just an amazing, amazing effort. So it just goes to show that uh, it can be done. You can do it. Um, they had donuts at physical therapy. So I did an extra 10 minutes on the exercise bike. I only had one. Good for you. <laughs> That's so funny. Hey, Jennifer, how are you? Uh, got to drop those bad habits for sure. I'm having difficulty finding the time to read books, working on it, having self-conversations, very important in the mix. Exchange those bad habits for good productive ones. But do you know how? That's, um, are you, no, you must have jumped on a little bit later, Lucy. It's still in the box. Here it is. <laughs> Here it is, but it's still in the box. I haven't had time yet. Working late last night, up really early this morning for a Zoom call with our web designer, so it just doesn't stop at the moment. Um, but I will get there. Um, what do you guys think? Before I share with you the whole purpose of this video regarding some things you can think of to break bad habits, what do you think you can do? Or what have you done in the past? to help you break a bad habit. I'm interested to see what you guys think before I share with you what scientifically has been proven to help break bad habits. And it still requires effort. You can't you can't get rid of bad habits overnight. But what, what do you guys think helps break bad habits? I'd be intrigued to see what you guys think. 
Um, hey, Brittany, good to see you on. We've got Tala as well. Happy holidays. Absolutely. Can you believe Christmas is only like a, a few days away, a couple of days away for us? Hey, Terry. Oh, we're not saying hello to Terry. She's at work. <laughs> Hi, Jade. Good to see you on. Hello, Cynthia. Guilty of most of those. Uh, yeah, way to go, Laurie. Absolutely. Drink water now. Yes, you. Yes, me. Where's my water? It's over there. Thank you. <laughs> um, High five, Mike. How are you? So awesome. Um, heal, Helen. I think you mean hi. Hello, Cindy. How are you? Oh, there you go. Yeah. 20 days in a row of doing something will break your habit. So um, the consistency. What else have you got, guys, that, that breaks a habit? So that's a really good one. So when you do something um, new for days in a row, you can actually create new habits and new habits can override old habits. That's quite correct. So consistency and repetition, that requires sometimes willpower and effort and all of that, but that is definitely something that will help you break a um, habit. Committing to stop, self-talk. Look at what the bad habit can cause. Change your mind. So we're going to build on that, Cherie. So great point there, okay? So subconsciously, whatever your bad habits are now, guys, you will always fall back into them, always. If you know you've got a bad habit of not exercising or chocolate or procrastinating or things you, you know that you don't serve you well, it's there for a reason and it's there for the most part subconsciously. My apologies. I couldn't hear what you said. Okay, Suri, thank you for chiming into the um, conversation. <laughs> I didn't even touch my phone, so I'm not sure why Sh Suri chimed in then. But um, subconsciously, you will always fall back into the same thing. So there are other things that you know, you know, that ring true for you. Yeah, why do I always do that? You say to yourself or <clears throat> you say to other people, yeah, that's a really bad habit of mine. My go-to is chocolate or ice cream or, yeah, I need something sweet after dinner every night or, you know, you've got these habits. Most of those... 99% of the time, if you if there's something that's repetitive over a long period of time, it's something buried in your subconscious. Now, the downfall of that is that you actually won't be able to break that unless you consciously decide to because this is why we do things and you don't even know the reason that you do them. So the things that you just tell yourself to be true to yourself, well, that's just me. That's just what I do. That's just, um, you know, what I need. Like we tell ourselves these things because that's what I, we're driven by our subconscious. So the very first thing that you need to start with to conquer any kind of bad habit moving forward, and this is meant to be motivation for you guys for next year, but you shouldn't use next year as the excuse. It could be something you could do right now okay, is have a really high level of awareness of what you're doing and what you're saying. So not only to others, but to yourself. And if you do go for the chocolate every night after dinner, and you know that's a bad habit, actually having a really high level of awareness of what the things that you do that don't serve you well. Unless you have a high level of awareness, you can't change Jack, you know what. So having a high level of awareness of the things that don't serve you well, you know what they are. And when you're doing them, you're actually thinking about like, why am I doing this? Why am I eating this chocolate? <laughs> um, unless you have a high level of awareness, you can't change anything. Your subconscious will keep you driven for the rest of your life. So that's step one. Step two, this is what's been scientifically proven to help break habits, is actually uh, mentally going through the exercise of realizing what the cost is. What's the impact? What's the cost? What's the downfall? What's the implication? What's the worst case scenario of you keeping up that bad habit? So let's say, so I don't mean to pick on you, Laurie, but just because you've kicked two huge habits just, um, you know, in the last few months, one of those for Laurie was smoking. So think about the cost, the ultimate cost, the ultimate downfall of continuing to smoke. What could that be? Well, ultimately it could be death, couldn't it? And that's where you have to, when you've got that high level of awareness, that's where you need to go to in your brain to remind yourself don't do it. So those things that you, um, you know, have that are bad habits of you, what is the ultimate cost of continuing that bad habit? If you keep procrastinating in your business, where are you going to end up? Well, let's talk in December 2021 and see if you're any further in your business than you are in December 2020. Probably not. 
So the downfall of procrastinating is that you don't make any progress in your business. And what's the impact of that? You're not making any money. What's the impact of that? You haven't got food on the table for your kids or your family or whoever. Does that make sense, guys? So it's a bit of a psychological exercise that you need to go through, but you have to override your subconscious neurology. That's what this is all about. I know that's a bit in depth, but unless you actually think about this kind of stuff and go through those thought processes, you will be run by your subconscious for the rest of your life. That's what human beings do. So unless you override your neurology by what you think and how you sort of handle these situations, you're going to continue the same patterns. So what's the cost of your bad habit that, you know, like not exercising, not walking, not, not um, you know, eating properly, whatever. What's the ultimate cost of that? is that you end up really huge, really uncomfortable, no energy, and, um, you know, maybe your sugar levels are through the roof and, you know, whatever the, the ultimate cost is of whatever it is that you're doing. Is that what you want for yourself and your family and your kids and your grandkids and whoever's important to you? So we need to go through that psychologically to actually put a cost to whatever it was we're doing because when we're in the moment, geez, that chocolate tastes good, doesn't it? Um, but when you do it every day, like little things done consistently over and over again um, are either good or bad. So you can get yourself into really bad habits by increasing something. So something that you do small every single day could be really actually bad for you. But subconsciously, if you know the cost of that and you make a little improvement every day consistently over a number of days, you know, 21, 28, 30, you know, the longer the better you can actually create new neurological patterns in your brain to go, that's not what I do anymore. People do that all the time. It's like, yep, that's the person I used to be. I don't do that anymore. But it takes really conscious thought regarding a high level of awareness of what doesn't serve you. So think about that when you're doing things. It's like, why am I doing this? It doesn't make sense. Like this does not serve me. So actually think a little bit deeper than that because that's not going to stop you because it feels good at the time or sitting on the couch rather than going for a walk, those kind of things. It feels better to sit on the couch. But think about the ultimate cost of what it is that you're not doing and remind yourself of that because that's the, yeah, the neurological driver that you're going to need to actually stop yourself, create a new habit and then create new pathways. Does that make sense? So what is the cost of your bad habits? Think about that. And is that something that you really want to continue? Because that's what you're going to have to remind yourself to stop it. Okay, can you do that? Um, pretty much all the things that are good for you <laughs> are things that, well, no, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't label it that way. But a lot of the things that are good for us are things that we don't want to do. So maybe you don't feel like getting up and exercising, especially those of you that are in really, really cold environments at the moment. It's freezing and you don't want to go outside and exercise or you don't want to get on the exercise bike or something that you've got inside because it's really, really cold and it's just warmer to stay in front of the fire. You know, those kind of things. My, some things that are good for us are actually really hard to do. So your the way that your brain works, I've talked about this over and over again, your brain always is designed to keep you safe. That's what it's designed to do. So what makes you feel uncomfortable? Your brain is trained to talk you out of it. So it's more comfortable on the couch. Oh, it's going to be really uncomfortable if I go out in the cold. So your brain goes, that's okay. You can do it tomorrow. So the diet, the chocolate, the donuts or whatever it is, um, you know, it's, it's hard work to be healthier. It's much easier to go for the donut and things like that. So your brain says, yeah, it's okay, it's feel good. You'll feel better when you've had the donut because it makes you feel good. That's what your brain is designed to do. So most things that uh, um, you know we know we should do but we don't want to do takes a hell of a lot of effort. So you have to be the one and the driver and the mental force and have that clarity to make it happen. Do you agree? I want to know what your thoughts are around this. So, uh, yes, your thought process, mindset, and the willingness to change. But you've got to start with a high level of awareness. Otherwise, you're going to end up with the same bad habits into next year, the year after, the year after that. You have to be very highly conscious of what they are and what the cost of them are. Making up your own mind to do it, for me, that is everything. And it's believing that you can. And even when you don't think you can, having that belief in you as an individual that, that, that you'll get there somehow. You don't have to know the how. You really don't. If you get up caught in the how, you won't end up following through whatever it is. It's like business. You might not know all the how. You might want to be a six-figure earner, but you don't know all the how yet. 
you can't because you can't see it and you haven't done it before. So your brain goes into, oh, I don't know if that's possible because I've never done it before. You've got to believe in the fact that you're capable of doing it, even if you don't know how to do it at the moment. That's what's going to make you successful. It's the belief in yourself that you can achieve what you want to achieve and you can earn as much money as you want to. If you truly don't believe that, guys, you'll never get there. If that little voice in your head pops in and goes, well, I've never been a six-figure earner before, I'm not sure if I can, guess where you're going to stay stuck? It's a bad habit of way of thinking. Bad habits are not all physical things. Bad habits can be the way that you think and talk to yourself. And so you need to, you know, uh, work, you know, mentally ways to turn that around. Atomic Habits by James Clear, such a great book to help you break your habits. Thank you for that recommendation. Any books that anybody brings here to the community, um, embrace that. Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Chantel, I need to stop binging and doubting yourself. So there you go. Chantel, self-identified, that's the very first part. So binge eating, what's the downfall of binge eating? Where is that going to end up? you know, for Chantel and thinking of the consequences of that. Doubting yourself, where is that going to keep Chantel stuck? So really diving deep, you have to go deeper, guys, if you want to change your life. You can't stay on the surface level because you'll end up doing the same things you've always done because that we're run by our subconscious. So you have to go deeper with these things if you want to change who you are for the better. Uh, makes great sense having to keep thinking and talking to yourself to change. Uh, the cost is too great. Absolutely. But it requires hard work, guys. You can't break a habit for anyone else but you. Ultimately, if you're not doing it for you, you're going to have a massive struggle. Yeah, if somebody tells you you need to do something or change, but you don't really have the buy-in, you won't. It won't work. Um, creating new neurological patterns, grow new roots in your brain to stop. Exactly. Yes, I can and have. Beautiful. We like the word can. We do not like the word can't. Can't needs to go from your vocab. When you say I can't, you need to have a really high level of awareness of that one. Uh, we need to remember the high level of awareness so that we can remind ourselves to create new habits. Absolutely. It's got to be in the forefront of your mind. Yes, exercise, shovel snow, snowboarding, uh, skiing, snowshoeing, love all of that, Raphael. I think that's amazing. So true, Helen. That's the culprit, your brain. Yeah, but people don't realise that and people don't realise they're run by their subconscious. And that could be from when you were a kid, um, what your parents told you to be true. Um, you know, if your parents were broke, you probably subconsciously believed that you're never going to make a lot of money. Like all that stuff is buried in your subconscious. So unless you have a high level of awareness, oh, well, that was their life. That's not my life. That doesn't dictate what I can achieve. I can achieve anything. Like you've got to have a high level of awareness of that to be able to turn it around. Susan, yes, agree. Lucy, you are nailing everything to a T. Beautiful. Sometimes we don't even realise we have a bad habit that we need to replace with a good one until it does us harm. Yes, very true, Cindy. And that's because we're run by our subconscious. We just do things and we think it's normal, but we actually have the ability to change. Each and every one of you, even if you think something's really hard, that's just a story you tell yourself. You make it hard because you tell yourself it's hard. If you tell yourself it's easy, guess what? It'll be easier. Um, what we say, what we think, what we believe, our brain makes us who we are. And if you're not who you truly want to be in this world, if you're not truly happy and living a life that you know you deserve, you've got a lot of work to do in your own head because that's where it all comes from. There's a lot of people that work, walk around and play the victim. And it's like, um, you know, oh, I'm a failure or I haven't done well or I haven't achieved what I wanted to achieve. Or don't tell yourself that story because guess what's going to happen in the next year or two years? You're going to live out your story because that's what you believe. It's like, okay, it's time to pivot. This is my past. That has not worked out the way I wanted it to, but that does not dictate what happens moving forward. That's up to me. So get out of the doldrums. Stop feeling sorry for yourself and, and make it happen. And no one else can make it happen for you. you got to make it happen for you. That's the one thing I have going for me, a high level of awareness. Good, great, Cherie. It's always the how, the belief system. It all comes down to the belief system. I've been changing myself since I was 25. Awesome. Always a work in progress. Oh, my, the little voice in my head. Everyone's got one. 
and sometimes that little voice does not serve you very well. For me, if I can get a few days under my belt, then I am less likely to go back to it because I don't want to disappoint myself. But those first several days are tough. Absolutely, Laurie, but if that's what you know works for you and you can just push through, you know you're going to be okay. So that's that's a great realisation. Getting rid of bad habits and changing myself. Uh, Sheila, Helen, you're so on point with everything. Well, I'm glad, glad you agree. Heather, just had, sorry, I can't see you there, but just had a serious talk with myself today over my lunch break. I really wanted to shove crap in my mouth or run into the bedroom and pull up the covers over my head, but I didn't. I threw my workout clothes on and did a workout with weights and treadmill instead, all while watched the replay of you while I was running. Had to tell my brain that it's not acceptable to punch someone at work when you are frustrated and upset. And the best thing to do in those occasions is exactly what you did, Heather, is to exercise and to do something different. So well done, Heather. It takes uh, guts and, you know, um, willpower you know, to do that. So well done for choosing, you know, the right path. You know, absolutely, Raphael, you got this. Everyone got this, but you make the choice to get this, got this. You know what I mean? No worries, Chantel. Hello, Ford. I make hard decisions all day at work, then turn incompetent when I get home. Negative self-talk as I walk in the door. Easy enough to do because we would rather, this is sad but true, not just for you, Ford, but lots of people, we're okay with the letting ourselves down, but we don't want to let other people down. So clients, patients, in your case, Ford, and, um, you know, friends and family and stuff like that, we will have high regard for not letting other people down, but sometimes we let ourselves down over and over again. We don't value ourselves with time. We don't value ourselves with food and what we put in our mouths and nourish ourselves with, um, you know, what we drink and, you know, all those kind of things. And that is not acceptable because if you're not at your best, you can't be the best for other people. You can't be the best for your husband, your wife, your kids, your friends. There'll be something missing in you always unless you feel amazing about yourself and your life so unless that's how you feel there's always work to be done always work to be done if you're agitated if you're frustrated if you you know you have to change like Heather did you got to change your environment and change up you, know, you can't indulge in that kind of stuff you got to flick that switch and go no I have a high level of awareness I'm shitty at the moment and I don't want to stay there so I'm going to run on the treadmill in Heather's case but yeah Ford you need to value yourself more because negative self-talk as soon as you walk in the door is not going to serve you and you're going to end up in the same place this time next year for you. You might be amazing at your job, but you're not going to achieve anything you want to achieve. And that's not what life's all about, guys. We only live once and you want to get the most out of it for you and your family. I didn't know about the subconscious, but I've realized now that it's things that are buried deep in my mind that I wasn't aware of. And that all comes from, you know, ca um, caveman days, guys, fight or flight fight or flight. That's who we are as human beings, fight or flight, and we'll, our brain will always go to protect you, always. So anything uncomfortable, it'll always go to protect you, which means it'll talk you out of things that you know are good for you, but they're uncomfortable. They're safe. Sitting on the lounge is safe. Eating ice cream is safe. Not sending a message to somebody who you're really scared of sending the message to is, is safe. So your brain is designed to keep you very safe, but it's not designed to make you a millionaire unless you choose thoughts otherwise. Okay, really, really important to be in control of that. Okay, yeah, that's an amazing book I talk about all the time, Rafael, the five-second rule. Um, just five, four, three, two, one, get it done. Just, just do it. And I, I talk about that book a lot in my video challenges because some people just can't push the button. And what's that all about? That's just about ego worried about what people think. Um, you know, I've shared that with you many a times. I don't need to repeat that. Yeah, I know. I still haven't done that, have I? So let's quickly do that. Take a breath. But I'm, I'm out, over and out. I've had my piece. I've had my say. I share this with you to try to help you raise your level of awareness. You can't change any of your bad habits unless you think about the bad habits that you have. So I talk about this kind of stuff to make you think about it and put it on your radar because it's on your radar, you've got half a chance to change it. If it's not on your radar, whatever your bad habits are, are going to continue day in, day out, week in, week out, year in, year out. So I raise these kind of issues with you guys because I want you to get rid of your bad habits for you. 
for your life, your happiness, your success. We want you to all be millionaires. We want you to all be really, really happy and successful and making a lot of money. Is that not what you want for yourself? So those of you that know that you've got and you've got a high level of awareness regarding things that don't serve you well, you're the only one that can change them. Not me, not anyone you listen to, not a book you read. Nobody else can do it but you. So I want to fire you up with ammunition to help you be a better version of you and that's why I talk about this kind of stuff. Okay, so I've had my say. I'll leave it there. I hope you get some kind of uh, thought provoking um, thing out of this video. And it just makes you a little bit aware of maybe the things that aren't serving you well and how you can change it. So think about the consequence. Think, think about the ultimate cost of you continuing whatever that bad habit is for you. Okay, so. Um, again, those of you that want to join our online crew coaching family, click the link above and check out the details there because that's only available for um, a few more days, really. And I will see you guys tomorrow for my very last. Can you tell that this is itching me? <laughs> Laurie, I love your lays, but they, they itch the side of my neck. Um, so when you see me going like that, you know it's just because it's itchy. Um, sorry, I digress. So I will see you guys same time tomorrow for my last official live of the year. Have an awesome rest of the day, guys, whatever part of the day it is for you. I appreciate you so much. I hope you guys know that. I love and adore this community. I really do. So I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.